My name is Samantha, and I am a freshman here at UC Davis. I live in the Cottonwood dormitories, and welcome to Cottonwood. Today, I will be taking you through several rooms that are currently unoccupied due to the COVID-19 or coronavirus crisis. So at the end, I will take you on a tour of my room, which is actually occupied, so you can see all the fun crap that I have lying around in my room that I use um, for school and stuff. This is an example of a single room. You have the space to hang your clothes. There is a rack for a hand towel. Here's your dresser uh, where you can put clothes in. All your rooms come with a desk, a chair, a floor thingy, and a lamp. You also have bulletin boards to put stuff. And here's the bed, which you can choose to loft or to just leave it the way it came in. You also have control um, over your room with the thermometer and there is a vent. All doors can be locked open using the magnetic door stop. You access the room by swiping your Aggie card. This is an example of a double um, with a kind of non-standard configuration. As you can see, the room is a little bit bigger um, based on appearances because it's more square rectangular rather than actually re rectangular. Um, like the other rooms, you have your dresser and then your other dresser with your rod and you have your two bulletin boards um, and then the two desks. You'll notice that the two desks are right next to each other in front of the window. That's because uh, the room is more squarish so you actually have space um, on either side of the bed to um, have your furniture laid out this way. This is an example of a double room with the more rectangular layout. So like the triples, they have their dressers and their rods um, up against the wall. As you enter, there's the second dresser. Um, but you can see that instead of having a desk um, at the window, they chose to move their desks to the side um, and that there is, it's more rectangular, so that's why the beds are closer together. It's still very big, um, you just have more space um, in the middle of the room and it's more of a rectangular space rather than, in, uh, rather than a square space. And again, you have your two bulletin boards on either side, the window. Something to note about this layout is that it's the same as a triple, except that you don't have that extra wardrobe, extra bed, extra chair, and extra desk and lamp. This is an example of a triple room. The cool thing about triples is that you have two um, dressers and then you also have a wardrobe instead of the third dresser and pole and again everybody gets a desk and a lamp there's one bed there's the window and then there's the bunk bed um, what a lot of people do is they rotate who's on top uh, for each quarter to help resolve any issues that might arise from being on the top bunk. And you have two bulletin boards and you have the thermostat over here. And again, held open with the magnetic door stopper. This is another triple room. Um, you'll notice that this one has a ladder um, attached to the bed in addition to a guard to stop you from falling off, which those you can request recharge from student housing to put in um, and they can install it for you. And again, you have the, the wardrobe instead of the dresser and rod. This is the lounge. 
Um, it's a place where you can study, just hang out, um, meet up with people from other buildings and other rooms. Um, there's tons of seating, there's chairs, there's outlets everywhere. There's also um, a different um, waste disposal facilities here. And you can rearrange uh, the furniture for different events or just because you feel like it. And it's a really nice place to just hang out. And also you have a great view of the quad. This is the Cottonwood Study Lounge. Um, as you can see, nobody's in here right now, but that is okay with another waste disposal unit. This is a more, um, more professional place to meet up with people if you're working on a group project. There's a whiteboard. Uh, there's supposed to be pens there, but uh, there's not pens there anymore. And a lot of people come here to work on group projects because it's on the first floor and you don't have to go up any stairs, which is really nice. <laughs> This is what an occupied room looks like. So my room is set in the more squarish rectangular layout where we have a bed over there and then another bed over here with the two desks in the middle. So there's nobody on this side because my roommate moved out um, early and I chose to stay here because I love the dorm so much. So let me just take you on a tour of my room. Over here I've hung up all my coats because I would lose them otherwise. Over here, this is my towel. Um, you can tell that the room is occupied because there is a ton of trash. Going up over here, um, every room comes with hooks. Um, one hook per person. So you can hang your towel there or honestly anything else, whatever works for you. Cleaning supplies, here, there are all my clothes. My shower caddy and other bathroom supplies. And I'm not gonna open up my drawers because they are a mess. Here's what the other side looks like. Um, I put my stuff there because nobody's here. So I'll open up these drawers. So you can see they have a lot of space and you get three of those. So my roommate chose to loft her bed, um, but it's up to you. I chose to keep mine on the floor. She had a little stool so that she could get up easily. Um, but that was her choice. There's my bike. Most students in Davis have a bike. Um, I'm not storing mine outside because I'm not riding it as much and I don't want it to get stolen because bike theft is an issue um, at school. Here's the desk. Um, those are personal reading books and also some textbooks. Um, I highly recommend getting one of these drying mats. It actually encourages me to do my dishes. <laughs> This is just kind of a flat space, but you can push it in and out. I use this way more often than my other drawers because it's actually the perfect size for my computer. So you have a lot of space in the desks. Here are my little plants. They are doing okay, I guess. I have a lot of organizational items, my water bottle computer. And here's my bed and as you can see i definitely put stuff on my bulletin board so we got a we chose to rent a mini fridge from the associated student union at uc davis because we didn't want to have to worry about dealing with it at the end of the year so it's called a micro fridge because it has the microwave included not because it's small so the microwave is actually a part of the fridge because if you look on the back it's all bolted in together What we liked about this one was that you had a separate freezer and a separate fridge. So that was really nice to have that. We also have a mini Keurig, um, which is super nice for making hot water and just more organizational stuff up here. Um, and we have our thermostat set to the highest temperature because it is freezing. And again, I can lock my door open using the magnetic Hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Now I will answer some frequently asked questions that I get when I'm talking to people about my university. First question, what is your major? Well, I'm a math major and I have the shirt to prove it. 
I'm also minoring in Spanish. Why did you choose Davis? So I was choosing between Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and UC Davis for potential university options. I toured both locations and basically it came down to flexibility, location, and vibe. So Cal Poly SLO is not very flexible when it comes to changing your majors and that was something that I wanted out of my university. UC Davis works with you very hard to make sure that you are happy where you are and if you aren't happy in your current field of study then they'll work with you to make sure that you are. Davis is an amazing college town and so slow however I just really liked the trees and the buildings more up here rather than in San Luis Obispo. I wanted to change from my hometown and Cal Poly slow was just not as drastic as I actually wanted. The vibe up here is great. Everybody here is super nice and friendly, and I've noticed that no matter where I am on campus, I'll pretty much see somebody that I'll recognize, or you know, you can just smile or wave at somebody as you're biking, and they'll just smile and wave back, which is really nice. And really, it's just, if you have a gut feeling that's like, oh, this is a school for me, then you should go with it. So on your housing application, you might be wondering, can I actually choose the building that I want to live in slash room? And the answer is no, but you can request certain areas and room types, choosing between tercero, segundo, or cuarto. So I'm currently in a double room, as you guys saw on the tour, and I found that it is plenty of space. I love my building, I love my room, I love my roommate, which is really nice. So Cottonwood is part of the under tercero complex. And looking at a map, you can see that it is in the southwest um, area of campus. And because I have a bike, it doesn't take me very long to get to other areas on campus. And I would definitely recommend getting a bike if you do decide to come here. You can also request the type of room that you're in, single, double, or triple. If you want to end up in a double, I would recommend requesting a roommate, even if it's somebody that you don't really know. Just find somebody random and be like, hey, do you want to be roommates? and go with it that way because I know people who requested a double and chose to go random and didn't end up getting in a double and they were in a triple. So if being in a double is something that you really want, make sure that you have a roommate that you want to request. But you don't actually get to choose, you just request. And you can also request either a roommate or multiple roommates depending on whether you elect to live in a double or a triple. Um, I know people who have gone random and they absolutely loved it, um, but I've also heard horror stories as I'm sure you guys have. So it really just depends on the people that you're with. I would recommend for whatever university you decide to go to, to join the Facebook group um, class of 2024 or whatever your class is and talk to people there. That's how I met my roommate. And we met up and we decided to go for it and it worked out really well. What about food? I found that UC Davis ranks pretty high on the university foods that I've had um, at different universities, but like any dorm food, it will get old quickly, which is why you have Aggie Cash. You get $200 per quarter allocated to you as part of your housing plan, and you can use them at most of the buildings on campus, um, even in the food trucks. And at most places, you do get a 10% discount off of Aggie Cash, and if you run out, you can always buy more. Or just hope that your roommate hasn't used hers, and then you can use theirs, which is what I did. How do you get to campus? So the Sacramento International Airport is very close to us. If you look at a map, there's a little rectangle, and in the corners are Sacramento, Woodland, and Davis. So it doesn't take very long to get to Davis from the Sacramento airport because the Sacramento airport is in the west area of Sacramento, which makes it really convenient for if I'm trying to fly home. The hardest part is getting to the airport, but don't worry because there is a service called Yolo Bus, which is the public transportation for the county of Yolo, which is the, where Davis is situated in. And all University of Davis students have access for free just by showing your acumen. Social life. Personally, I don't really have one, but also I didn't really have one when I was in high school, so I kind of can't miss what I never had. 
My roommate is in a sorority, Sigma Alpha Epsilon Pi. They're a newer sorority that was actually founded at UC Davis, so that's pretty cool. And I go to their events sometimes. If you want to be part of Greek life, go for it. I have Fall Rush, and also some groups have Spring Rush. University works hard to make sure that you have the opportunities to be in part of a sorority or fraternity if that is what you choose to do. If you aren't part of one, it's totally fine. Nobody gives you any crap about it. So I would say the Greek life is a part. It's definitely noticeable, but if you aren't part of it, no. Weather. Davis is in central California, so there's no bodies of water nearby. Because of that, it gets hot in the summer and it can be cold in the winter. The most drastic weather that I've noticed is wind. It is very normal to be windy. Sometimes it can get up to 30 miles per hour of wind, which makes biking very annoying, but still manageable. Most of the time, the days are pretty reasonable and ranging from 60 degrees to 80 degrees. That's normal for like fall and spring weather. At the beginning of the year and at the end of the year is when it gets really hot, but that's okay because all the buildings have air conditioning and the dorms, you can control your room to a certain extent. It can also rain quite a bit up here too, which is why if you do get a bike, you need fenders, which are just little coverings that mimic the outside of the wheel and stop the water and mud from being kicked up onto your back so that you don't earn what is affectionately known here as the fresh stuff. So I really hope that you enjoy, and if you have any comments or questions, just comment them below.